Sin is a huge problem. What has God done to make us clean of our sin? How has he forgiven us in Christ? Consider the three containers I have on the table. The one container represents you and me, the second container, sin, the third container, Jesus. Let's talk about them a little bit more. The Bible makes it clear regarding you and me, we have sinned, we have done wrong, we have gone against the Almighty God. The Bible says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. What is the glory of God? That we live a sinless life, and yet we have all fallen short. What about sin? Well, the Bible talks about sin, and the Bible even gives it a color. In Isaiah chapter 1, the Lord says, Come now and let us reason together. Though your sins are as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be like wool. That is pointing ahead to a time when through Jesus, God would make us holy in his sight. And what about Jesus? Who is he? He is the sinless son of God sent down from heaven by God the Father to put on human flesh. When we think about Jesus, we could think about what I like to call the big five, his birth, life, death, resurrection, and ascension. Regarding his birth, he came from a virgin birth. He was born into the world without sin. What about his life? The Bible says he was tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he remained without sin. So birth, life, and then his death. Well, before he died, God the Father took the sins of the whole world and placed them upon his son. And then God the Father poured out his wrath upon his son, punishing him for your sins and mine, even the sins of the entire world. So birth, life, death, and then his resurrection. God the Father is saying to the whole world, I have accepted the sacrifice of my son, and now he is alive forevermore. And what is Jesus doing now? He is ruling and reigning over all things, and he is doing so especially for the good of the church, for the good of those who trust in him. So birth, life, death, resurrection, and ascension. 40 days after he was raised from the dead, then he ascended into heaven. Now he is ruling over all things. And when the time is right, according to the time already appointed, then he will come again. Going back to the three containers, let's take a look at them in this way. So if we think about the middle container representing sin, that is what happened when Adam and Eve fell into sin. They were perfect, but when they fell into sin, they were tainted by sin. And there's nothing they could do to fix it. A sad situation, the Bible says, if we say that we have no sin, we are deceiving ourselves and the truth is not in us. It doesn't matter what we think. It doesn't matter how we feel. What matters is what God says about us in his holy word. What about Jesus? Again, he is the perfect son of God. God sent him as the lamb of God to take away the sin of the world. So through Jesus, what happens? Well, he is so powerful that his perfect life in his sacrificial death, they overcome our sin. The Bible says that Jesus is the propitiation for our sins. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Through Jesus, there is full forgiveness. When we think about Jesus, God is calling everyone to repent. God is calling everyone to admit their sins, to be sorry for their sins, to turn from their sins, and to receive 
Jesus and all he has done to take away our sins. Let's think about Jesus being on the cross. It's Good Friday. What did God the Father do? He took the sins of the world and he put them on Jesus. So Jesus had those sins. He received our punishment. But is now Jesus a sinner? He was able to absorb our sin, and yet he remains the perfect Son of God. And then finally, when we think about Jesus, he is so powerful that he took away the sins of the world. So through him, all of the sins are gone. Now, when we think about that, does that mean that everyone is going to be welcomed into heaven someday because of what Jesus has done? That is not the case. The reason why it is not is because not everyone has yet repented. Not everyone has admitted their sin. Not everyone is sorry for their sin. Not everyone has yet received Jesus and the benefits of what he has done. Let us rejoice that through Jesus, our sins are forgiven for us who know him, who have by God's grace received him, and for everyone who has not yet repented, who does not know him, let us tell them the good news. Let us call them to repent that they might know him too.